to my YouTube channel. I'm EG and I can see. And today I have another reaction video for you guys. I'm so excited. This one is from Harmony Nice, who I reacted to last time. And this video is called How to Cast a Circle, Enchanted Endeavors, Episode 12. I'm like so excited for this because I don't even know what a circle is. I don't even know what casting a circle means. I'm assuming it means like to cast a spell for the witchy whatever stuff so i'm excited to see what she has to say like you maybe have seen in my last video i'm just going to read the energy and say whatever it is that i sense or see so let's get started Coming nice, and today I will be continuing my Enchanted Endeavors series. And this episode will be on how to cast a circle or how I cast a circle. There's a lot of you guys throughout I've started talking about Wicca have been asking me how I personally cast a circle. So, a lot of you guys say you feel like you're doing it wrong or you can't get to grips with it or you're completely stuck with it. But I thought it would be a very, very important video to do today. And oh my god, it feels so good to be sitting down and just filming again. And just so you guys know, there will be an Enchanted Endeavors episode art week, which is this one, and also one up next week for Lunasa as well. I want to do a video before Lunasa, so don't worry, that will be up before Lunasa actually. You guys notice she she kept like wiping her nose there was a spirit around her or like a little fairy a little like thing by her nose it comes around but just you know there will be one up next week too i just thought since we have Lunasa, Mavin and Samhain all coming up and if you are a Wiccan that hasn't actually learned to cast a circle yet i definitely think it's an important thing to know in my opinion anyway so this episode will be all about how to cast a circle, basics on what actually casting a circle is, why you would want to slash need to cast a circle, and also I will be doing a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I personally cast a circle too. Also, before every single Wicca-related video, I have to say that everybody in Wicca does things differently, especially when it comes to casting a circle. There is no proper way to cast a circle. We all adapt things, especially when it comes to casting a circle, to make it work for us. So just because a Wiccan does thing one way, like I may do things one way, another Wiccan may choose to do it completely differently. This is just kind of a helpful kind of a tutorial sort of thing to help you guys along that have like no idea how to cast a circle and really, really stuck with it. I know I've developed this method of casting a circle throughout my years of being a Wiccan to work for me. So once again, it may not work for you at all. You will develop a different way of doing things as your Wicca journey continues to make it right for you. So please bear that in mind. This is just my experience with the things and everybody has their own way of doing things and also if you are here because you are a critic and you do not believe just believe in it but you know if you're not here, here just to kind of hate on the whole thing that i'm about to do maybe this just isn't the video for you through point of watching it and getting annoyed with it just with all that being said thank you guys so much for watching i really really hope you enjoyed this enchanted Dennis episode if you did not see my last episode on litha i will put a link to my enchanted endeavors playlist in the description down below so if you wish to watch them then you can there and let's just hop right into it. So I think with the absolute complete basics, what actually is casting a circle? I'm sure a lot of you guys are actually aware that you may have seen a lot of different TV programs to do with witchcraft and witches, etc. casting a circle. Casting a circle is casting a protective space around oneself or one's altar or same planet altar or just the space that they are working in before you cast a spell or do ritual work or some even divination work. So I'm seeing something very bizarre. I don't really know what it is, but I'm seeing like a sun, like a, like the sun outside, like she, it's like, she's carrying it like on her back, like in her like chest neck area. And it's like, she's being like, she's being like crushed by the sun or something. And I'm pretty sure sun means soul, which is interesting. So I don't know if, that's like her soul is crushing her or if like she's not letting her soul 
shine like the sun? I don't know. But that's what I see. The purpose of casting a circle is to not only direct and strengthen your energies within the circle during sun ritual work, but also to keep out any negative energy or air or spirits or anything like that that may be trying to get to you and just like lingering around. The protective circle that you cast would keep things like that out. And this allows you to focus on your magical workings without anything negative or anything and getting to it all to distract you. I personally believe the energy you are channeling in a circle is much stronger too because nothing can get out either. But I feel like if you are just getting into spell and ritual work, this is definitely a crucial thing to learn, especially if you're having trouble with spells and ritual and you feel like they're being ineffective or maybe you may be a Wiccan that hasn't actually heard about it yet and you're kind of having like a spiritual block and you feel like nothing's working. I definitely think casting a circle is very very important and you feel like you definitely should learn about it. Some cast circles before they do any type of ritual, spell or divination work. Some that you can choose depending on what type of spell and ritual work they are doing. It really really depends on the Wiccan and what you feel is right. I personally do it depending on how I work with but I do cast a circle the majority of the time before I do anything like that. But I personally think there are plenty of positives to casting a circle. So why would we want slash need to cast a circle? So of course every Wiccan chooses to cast a circle for different reasons. I definitely feel like the effects of casting a circle make your spells and rituals and magical workings much more accurate. Whereas some do not find it necessary at all. I haven't actually ever spoke to any Wiccans that do not find She has a snake like right here. Hmm, that's like very like, um snake usually when i see snakes that usually means to me like trickery or like danger casting a circle necessary but i have actually seen online that some wiccans do not find casting a circle necessary i don't know their purpose for it but in my opinion i just think it's quite an important thing everybody does choose to do things for different reasons but to me casting a circle is creating a safe haven in a place your energies your practices makes your energy that you're challenging so much more effective and stronger also just helping to banish any negative energies in your circle too so nothing can kind of affect the area now we've discussed what casting a circle is and why you would want slash need to i'm going to be discussing and also showing you how i personally cast a circle but there are loads and loads of different ways that you can cast a circle Some people cast circles with different items you may have seen online and things like that like stones salt twigs crystals i could go on forever the amount of things that you could use to cast the circle with etc etc some people just do it metaphorically like how i do it with like elements but it generally kind of depends on what you feel is right some have one specific medium that they may use to cast the circle some people don't use anything some people do it how i do it which you will see in a bit obviously but you may feel there may be something specific that definitely strengthens your circle you may feel connected to and you may feel helps keep the energy in whereas other people just work with the elements to create it sometimes depending on the sabbaths and things like that i like to try different things depending on what i'm doing some people choose things that are relevant to the type of spells and ritual work they're doing to cast a circle it's be complicated but it's honestly not once you see this trail you'll understand you will just discover what works best for you as your wicker journey continues so now that i've discussed these sort of things that you can also use to cast a circle circle and kind of how people determine or what they feel is right to cast a circle. Now I'm going to be showing you how I cast a circle. Please remember, of course, this is one way of doing it. I cannot stress this enough. I'm going to be showing you how I cast a circle at a semi-permanent altar I have set up here. Just because I tried to film it at my altar earlier today and it's so hard to be clear and get it on film. Much easier and clearer in here. So I thought it would just be easier to show you on a temporary altar that I set up here. So this is the semi-permanent altar that I've set up to use, for example, on how I cast a circle. This is not how I usually set up a semi-permanent altar or an altar or anything like that. This is just an example, purely the base of this video. If you would like to see more on altars and you haven't got your altar set up or anything like that, yeah i do have an uncharted endeavors episode on that but again the playlist will be linked in the description down below so you can watch that there so what i have here to cast my circle is my broom my incense and my incense holder my chalice my wand my athane some sage some water and some salt just so you're aware on what all of it is so step one so what i'm hearing is all these things just kind of most of them do what you just tell yourself that they will do like placebo effect except the sword thing down there 
invites negative energy in is what I'm hearing and the star thing sucks the soul out of you it's like sucks your soul out so that's probably not good is to get rid of any unwanted air the first thing I do before casting a circle or even cleansing space is I take my broom and make a sweeping motion around my altar and myself this is done to get rid of all the old air and the energy that may be unwanted before I even begin to cleanse or cast a circle and obviously if you don't have a broom because not everybody's gonna have a broom to begin with you can just use your hand that literally does nothing by the way in case you're wondering and that's what I used to do is use my hand and you can sweep away the energy with your hands like you would a broom obviously if you do have a broom you can use your broom a lot of people do this in different ways and some people don't even choose to do this at the beginning this is just personal preference sometimes if you're doing this outside and stuff like that people do not find it's necessary so the second step is cleansing your circle next we are going to our altar to cleanse the sacred space before casting our circle what I like to use for cleansing the space firstly is water for the water element salt for our earth element and then also incense or what i personally like to use is this takes you back into the old earth is what i'm hearing where like you actually would need to do stuff like this <laughs> like because in the new world like when i say new world i mean like new like new awareness like a new way of seeing life like in like a new world you wouldn't need to do any of this it would just be totally unnecessary because you already have everything you need inside of you and you can create what you want instantly but it feels like this takes you back into the old earth sage i love to use sage for cleansing things much more than i do incense it is just my personal preference and i know a lot of people like to use incense and that is totally fine that is just my personal preference on it and the sage that i'm going to burn will be a representation of the fire and the smoke that will come out of it will be a representation of air we have all of our four elements there and i'm also going to be using my so what i'm hearing is that the sage only clears the second density level do I know what a density level is? Nope, no idea, but that's what I heard. Um, so maybe you guys can go look that up. And I'm hearing it does not clear like the negative emotions that you have around you. So it doesn't really do a whole lot. Chalice for this part, but I will get into that in a minute. Now I'm exercising the water that I'm going to be using. There are a lot of different reasons why people exercise water, but it does pick up different types of energies and things like that, especially if you get it from like public places, etc., and lakes and things like that. So I always exercise the water and I bless the salt and the chalice. And I'm using my athane to do this. And I actually currently cast all of my circles with my athane just because I'm planning to renew my wand very, very soon. I'm actually planning to re renew my athane as well. I'm actually planning to renew my wand sooner. But anyway, it's a very, very common thing, of course, to use your wand to cast circles. Definitely, I did use my wand for a very, very long time to cast circles, but now I use my athane. Or some people like to use their finger or a sword, etc. You can choose to do this in various amount of ways depending on how you work. So I'm not going to be showing you how I bless and cleanse the water, the chalice, and the salt. I will when I start talking about spell work on here. But there are tons of different methods, so do this before you cast a circle as you wish, as you normally would. So after I've exercised the water and blessed the salt and the chalice, now I take my chalice and I place a small amount of water in the bottom of the chalice, and then taking my athane, I place a small amount of salt in the chalice too, and I mix the two together and then wipe my athane clean after. So now that I've done this, it's... So the water itself is great. Water has consciousness within it, water can clear stuff. You can literally like program the water you drink to like heal you. But then she messes it up with the salt, which takes you back like, I'm hearing like where gravity exists, which obviously like gravity exists everywhere, but I'm, as far as like, it like sucks you back into like the piece of you um, that is like dead by using the salt. It's time to cleanse the stuff. So I stand up, and I start standing in the east direction. This is just the direction that I like to start, and a lot of people do a different way. This is just where I like to start. And going clockwise, I sprinkle the salt water around me, blessing the circle I'm going to be working in. And as I continue my way around and we're getting deep into thought, I think about how the water is really cleansing the air around you. And some people close their eyes, like I do quite a lot, and kind of let the water kind of take you around in a second. As she's doing that, I literally see like these creepy like men looking figures in like robes like surrounding her like pillars. It's like so whatever she's doing is like inviting something icky into her field. 
circle and you're sprinkling the water, a dead body, take them along and visualize the space becoming cleaner and more defined as you're going around. Obviously, like if you're closing your eyes, it just depends how much space you have, but I have quite a lot, so I just kind of like to take my body around. You do this until you reach your starting point again, which again is east for me. So once you've done that, you now take your fire and air element. So you either take your incense, or in my case, sage. But firstly, I like the sage, and then I assume my position facing east once again. I use the sage and I wave it around in my hand in a kind of circling, dragging motion around the circle that we are going to be cut. So what she's doing with this sage is what I'm hearing is she's just putting all the like icky gross energy in, in like one place. It's just like stuck there. It's not gone, it's still there. I personally like to use sage because I feel like it's easier to kind of control and use and cleanse the circle with. I feel much more free using it, but once again, everybody's different. A lot of people like to use incense. Sometimes I like to use incense if it is a sort of relevant to the ritual, but again, it just depends. So now I've cleansed the circle with all the elements, water, earth, fire, and air. And at this point, in my opinion, is where if I was doing something like using a different medium, like oats or salt, crystals, etc., like I said before, and this is when I would lay down a circle around me. Lots of people like to do it before they do the cleansing of it. Some people like to do it during instead. Some people like to do it afterwards. But personally for me, I would lay out if I'm using a different medium to if I felt like it was necessary to make the circle stronger. So now step three, it's time to actually cast our circle. So now you cleanse your circle and maybe place any mediums in position you might be using to cast your circle with. Now it's time to actually get into the casting circle part. So now you can take what you're using for casting a circle. So in my case, my athane or your wand or your finger, etc. So now I would call upon my deities or- Her feet are like, in this dirty pool of like water is what I'm seeing. So she is ground her feet. So your feet ground you obviously in this world. So whatever she is grounded in that water is icky. Or if I have a specific deity I would like to call upon, I would call on them now. And I may say something like, for example, either a group of deities that I may be wanting to call on for it or for a more specific example, the listener, the goddess of sun, fire, and light. I call upon you to watch over this circle. You can say a lot of different things to call upon your goddess and goddess. It literally just depends on where you've learnt it, what feels right, etc. That is just how I choose to call upon my deity. Now it's time to those are guides guides from the old worth old worth <laughs> from the old world is what i just heard aka they don't work anymore create your sacred circle once again i'm going to be facing east and the whole of the casting circle is channeling energy within it's weird she keeps wanting to face east and what i'm seeing is there's a mirror in front of her and there's also there's like a mirror in the back of her too and it is like keeping her from actually seeing the things that are in her field because if she actually saw what was actually in her field it would like scare her to death because it's really creepy in this magical circle i do this by sort of concealing myself to the earth and i do this by holding my athane to the east and visualizing i project and feel all the energy within me rooting from the ground through so the bottom of my feet and imagine that i'm being connected to the earth underneath me and i visualize so she's literally pulling up that like icky murky water that her feet are grounded into through her entire body. So she's just bringing up like gross energy through her body. From the top of my head to the bottom of my toes is holding onto the ground and your energy to the earth is combining and I concentrate on the flow of energy and I kind of just feel it within me. So now I'm imagining a white light coming from the bottom of my feet into my body and traveling through my wand. And I see white personally. People see tons of different colors. It kind of just depends. Don't worry if you don't see white. I personally see white. When casting a circle, there's lots of different things that you can say to cast a circle. Loads of different books say different things, loads of different ways that you can learn or what you can say. But it kind of just depends what feels right to you. So, for example, I'll obviously tell you what I'm going to say. Firstly, facing the east, I say, Element of air. I call upon you to watch over me while I work. I move round to the south. Element of fire. I call upon you to watch over me while I work. I'm still continuing. I move to the west. Element of water. I call upon you to watch over me while I work. And ask north, 
element of earth, I call upon you to watch over me while I work. As I'm doing this, I'm it's so weird. As she called on all those things, I saw like, like chain or like handcuffs, like wrapping around her that were like binding her into like, like fake. They're like fake guys. They're like not actually like real, good like high vibrational things. And as I'm working my way around and calling upon the end, I'm visualizing this white light is coming through me, coming through my wand, creating this circle as I join me. I just heard the white light that she called on is a fake guide. Each element. And lastly, I call upon the spirit element. I take my afeng from above me and I kneel to the ground and place my afeng on the ground and say, as above, so below. I call upon the element of spirit. Out you have cast your circle for your ritual, spell work, divination. She just called on a big old ghost. Hmm. Magical workings, even some people even do this before spiritual connection and necromancy. And nothing negative, no negative energy that may be lingering around can get to you in this space. Energy that you're challenging. I beg to differ. Challenging during your spell work. Meditation, whatever you may be doing, will be safe in this circle. And now I've cast my circle, of course, you would do the spell, ritual, whatever sort of magical work is you're going to be doing in the circle, but it's not over yet. After you've finished this workings, it's very, very important to close the circle. Almost just as important as it is to open the circle. I take my afeng and firstly start by kneeling on the ground where I left off when I called upon the spirit element. And I'm dragging my afeng from the bottom of the feet to the top of my head. And then I thank the element for its protection. She literally is like under the earth, like the old earth has like swallowed her so she's like inside i see her head like around like all this dirt during my workings this time i say i thank the element of spirit now i close this circle and as i'm doing this i'm imagining beaming. she just gave away a piece of her soul to that fake world thing that is not the real earth um Kind of white light that I envisioned before. And it's going back deep inside of me where it came from before, back through my afe, going anti clockwise, anti clockwise around the circle. I start by facing the east again where I started before, and I say, I thank the element of air. Now I close this circle. Then I face north and I thank the earth, west and I thank the water, and then I face south and I thank the fire, etc. etc. And once again, I'm imagining this white light I drew to cast my circle, disappearing back into my wall. I literally see like her arms falling off of her body and like being like fed into the earth. Like whatever is underneath her, you guys, is like it's like i don't even know how to describe it it's like what i would picture like the underworld to look like and it's like her like she's giving away maybe she doesn't know it but she's giving away pieces of her soul into the earth to like keep that old gross earth alive and like feed off of her light and through my body until i finish thanking all the elements then after that i thank my deities that have helped me throughout my practice i thank the deities that have helped me in my practice and then the circle is closed. And then I like to kind of brush away the air again. Some people like to keep it, some people like to brush it away the broomstick. I personally like to brush it away my broomstick again. And that is it. <laughs> it's probably a lot less complicated than you guys may thought it would be. But again, it's taking me a very, very long time to get used to this method. It's super, super hard to film and explain and talk about just because it's a very, very diverse subject. So I tried to make it as simple as I possibly could. I'm sorry if it's not all completely like clear as clear as the sky i hope you can kind of take something from them thank you guys so much for watching i really, really hope you enjoyed this enchanted endeavors episode all about how i personally cast a circle what casting a circle is etc etc i'll see you later on this week with another video that won't be enchanted endeavors episode that the enchanted endeavors episode will be up next week I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you out even a little bit. Thank you so much for 190,000 subscribers and 160,000 followers on Instagram. It means the world to me. It's so freaking cool. You guys are the best audience in the whole entire world. I appreciate you all so much and I will see you soon. Bye guys. All right, so let's stop there.
I really, you know, I go into these videos like with an open mind because I actually have no idea. I didn't even know like what casting a spell, I mean, casting a circle was. So I try to go into this with an open mind. Um, but from what I felt and sensed, unless you want to sell your soul to whatever underworld thing she got going on down there, unless you want to give up your soul and have it eaten and by whatever's down there, unless you want all that, I would not recommend you do this spell. <laughs> um, it does not seem safe at all. And in fact, it seems like it connects you to an old, like it's just old, it just feels old. Like it feels like whatever she was grounded into was like dead. Um, so yeah, I definitely would not recommend you guys try this spell. Um, but of course, if you do, use your um, intuition, use discretion, use discernment and pull things into your heart and ask yourself, how does this make you feel? Does this make me feel expanded and light and bright? Does this make me, my heart beat really fast and my, my palms get all sweaty? Does this make me feel nervous? Like ask yourself, how does this make me feel? Um, and with that, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all your support. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Comment below and let me know what you guys think. Comment below and let me know what you guys want to see next. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.